back to my channel. Well, I haven't posted in about a week because the past week has been absolutely crazy. So last week I had a TED talk on Saturday in New Jersey that went really cool. So I got into that a bit on episode 17 of This Is Life Unfiltered today. That was released on iTunes, SoundCloud, and the official This Is Life Unfiltered app. So check that out if you are looking for a pretty in-depth um, kind of conversation with me about how that TED Talk went. It was awesome and it was on rejection. But obviously last week something even more tragic and important happened in the world, which was the Florida shooting. So that happened, I believe it was I don't know what actually exactly what day it was last week, but sometime uh, during last week when I was in LA earlier in the week, I was sitting on my phone and I was on the phone with my friend and he was like, did you know that a shooting just happened? And I went on CNN and I was shocked. I do not believe in guns. I'm not somebody who believes in any sort of violence, but I definitely don't believe in guns. And for some reason, this particular shooting struck a chord with me. I think it's because I'm an age now where I've become an adult and I understand my surroundings more and all of the other shootings um, that were in school specifically, especially the one in Sandy Hook. I was in high school at, when that happened in Newtown, Connecticut, and that was 40 minutes from my high school. Um, so I, I remember it, but back then I didn't have enough knowledge about young people and uh, their minds. And I think because of that, this shooting, after doing so much research for my TED talk on social media and uh, how it's affecting young people, really made me more aware of what we need to do to prevent shootings like this happening. So I actually was reading a book, um, it's called When Likes Aren't Enough, and that's the book, it's by Tim Bono, it's actually not released, I didn't realize, this was an early copy that I got, uh, on March 13th, 2018 is when this book comes out. But it's by Tim Bono, who is a PhD, has a PhD. And basically the subtitle of the book is A Crash Course in the Science of Happiness. But in this book, he dives into what happiness is and how young people uh, are becoming more aware, but also losing sight of themselves and the visions that they have in the future because of the internet. So I thought it could be interesting to talk today about what the warning signs and the trigger signs are for young people who are becoming depressed, anxious, or might have even more severe issues going on. And the first sign that that is, is any sort of explosive anger. So I'm obviously not a trained therapist, a psychologist, anything. This is just coming from research that I've done on official websites as well as personal experience. So if you find that your child of any age is having a ton of anger is becoming physical with you at all. And this isn't like a little thing like their kid gets mad and he like, you know, hits your hand or something. If that keeps happening, that can be definitely a warning sign, but it's more so very, very, very uh, kind of spontaneous bouts of explosive anger. That might be including punching a wall, banging his head against the wall, banging her head against the wall, anything like that is I think a warning sign. And if you find that your child is suffering with that or you find that even a teacher has said something to you about an incident, the most important thing you can do is sit down and talk with your child. So creating an open, open, honest environment, which is what I talk about frequently on A Life in the Fashion Lane and through my platforms, creating that open environment for your child makes them feel more confident and comfortable talking to you about things. So if you see something with your child, even if they get a bad grade on a test, and you sit down and you say, how does that make you feel? Were you upset about this? Were you angry about this? That also gives your child a reason to want to come back to you and speak more openly about their feelings. So that's a huge warning sign, which is a lot of anger and especially being in any way physical or harming themselves. But on that note as well, harming themselves in any way, which is self-harm, cutting, any sight of an eating disorder, which might mean sitting at the dinner table and your child doesn't want to eat or uh, you find that she or he is mostly pushing the food around their plate, that can be a sign of an eating disorder. Or every time they eat, going right into the bathroom and you know, if they are bulimic or dealing with something like that, that's another sign of an eating disorder. And again, the best first step that you can do with that is simply sitting down with your child and talking to them about what is going on. And if you do think that there is a bigger issue here, what the necessary steps are to get them help, which might potentially mean, hi, which might potentially mean um, getting them into a 
uh, eating disorder awareness program or bringing them to a hospital if you think that it's very severe. It's very similar kind of treatments with substance abuse as well as eating disorders and that comes from a lot of intensive therapy. And if it's at a certain level and it's uh, more severe what they're suffering with, you might have to put them into an outpatient unit, which basically means that your child would stay there for a period of time. That's definitely a warning sign too. And then I think another warning sign is anything that you see that's alarming on social media. So if your child, if they have a fake Instagram, which is like a Finstagram, which a lot of young people do, and you find that they have blocked you on that, but they follow, you can follow their real Instagram or their real Facebook. And that makes you really uncomfortable. So if you see any type of alarming content on social media that you think is uh, bad or uh, makes you really uncomfortable. But if your child does necessarily, oh my God, everybody in my house is walking by today. If your child does necessarily post, you know, I mean block you on a platform and you think that you should have access to that platform, instead of bringing, uh, making, that conversation really uncomfortable and alarming. You can basically say what is on your Instagram or your Facebook that you don't think that I should see. And then if they give you a indirect answer and they are under the age of 18, I think that you have every right to take their cell phone and just even scroll through the page just to make sure. Cause you never know if anything, they might be posting crazy stuff, could be totally fine stuff and they just want a separate place away from their parent or they could be being bullied or even bullying somebody else and that's where you have to intervene. So there's a very fine line between helicopter parenting, which basically means over excessive parenting and over excessive interest in your child's life, trying to be their friend instead of their parent, um, between the line of also just being not even interested or totally uh, confused about what might be going on behind their screen. But I think what your child does post on social media really showcases what they're doing behind the scenes, what's happening after they leave school and when they're in school and um, even in the morning what they're doing and if you're seeing content or messages talking that they might be talking about themselves or talking about somebody else uh, in a uncomfortable or inappropriate way talking about suicide or talking about their eating habits or even potentially bullying somebody else it is also crucial that you intervene in that situation by simply talking to them and creating the conversation of why this is being so posted on social media because many young people under the age of even 20, sometimes even 18, don't know that everything that's posted on social media will be there for forever. So sometimes you might have the kid who's posting crazy stuff or stupid or inappropriate pictures and all they need to be told is this stuff doesn't go away and they'll stop and that's the end of it. But then you also might have the child who doesn't really realize that their content that they're posting will never leave the internet and then they might get catfished or they might have an uncomfortable situation as they get older and you want to make sure that you prevent that from happening and by preventing that from happening all you have to do is become involved with what's going on but doing it in a way that makes them feel comfortable and not feeling like you're being an overbearing parent because if your child gets any sight of when that you're being overbearing they will pretty much not involve you in anything and that's not the kind of parent that you want to be so I think that those are pretty much the warning signs between something going wrong with your child and you can't take that personally if something is going wrong with your child you just have to realize that young people are dealing with so much at a young age and sometimes it can be so hard for them to find their way and a parent or an adult figure can be the first step for a young person to be able to understand what's happening to them and their body as they get older. So you just want to make sure that you're doing it in the best way possible. So I will put some links below as well that you can check out for more therapy resources or even direct your kids to check out these resources because some of them are free, some of them are paid for, but there's also tons of apps as well that you can use. I did a blog post on this and these apps help you deal with anxiety, help you deal with stress, and that can also be a great start for your child to have these apps uh, available to them 24 seven at school and outside of school that if they are feeling stressed or anxious and they don't know where to turn to and they don't have a therapist, they can use one of these apps. And make sure to subscribe and uh, follow my channel. I think I said that wrong. Uh, but more importantly, check out uh, This Is Life Unfiltered, which is my podcast, where I pretty much go into more in-depth detail about all the topics I speak about on here. But specifically this week, was talking about the Florida uh, tragedy along with the TED Talk and kind of where my brand is going in the next few months. So I will see you guys on Friday for Sex Ed for Teens.